Well, good evening, everybody. How are y'all? We got started a little bit late tonight. I had a little bit of trouble with the internet, so I'm keeping an eye on everything here. I'm Dr. Kenneth Hyatt. This is Pastor Cindy Hyatt. Hey, guess what this is? This is Seeds of Victory Global Bible Study. Yay! And we're going to have a good time in the Word, and we are glad you are here. Yes, we are. We want to thank you for joining us. Um, it's marvelous to be able to come every week mm -hmm. and fulfill the assignment of the Lord, reach the world from Menard. Amen. And so what a blessing. And we do thank you for being with us. Mm -hmm. um, who all we got signed up so far? Lisa and Melissa. Hi, guys. I'm glad y'all are with glad us. Glad you're here. Yay. Melissa, kiss my babies. Yay. And I'm glad they got their stuff. And I hope yes. KK had a great birthday. Mm -hmm. I like that picture of, of on the on Facebook with her laying up there with the dog. <laughs> I thought that's pretty cool. Big like dog. That. Big dog. Those things are getting big. And he's big. still or it's she's he's still a baby. Still a puppy. Yeah. Still a baby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's a cool picture. I liked it. So Yeah. Way good. Oh good. Roy and Mary Jo are here. Hi y'all. Watching on Roku. Yay. Can't chat. Glad you're here. Yay, I'm glad. Uh, Trixie's here. Hey, Trixie. Yay. Said I couldn't see y'all and I couldn't see the chat and I was panicking that the internet was down and it did go off, Trixie. Ours, ours did go off. It shut off like just a three bit. minutes before. And so that's why we were late getting on. We had a little mm -hmm. bit of trouble with the internet. Uh, I don't know if the weather and all that kind of stuff is having an effect. I haven't checked the weather, but it's kind of cool here. It has cooled down considerably, and yeah. it's supposed to freeze tonight. Yeah. So, I imagine Angelo was getting cold. Yeah. I would guess. Speaking of Angelo, mm -hmm. Angela posted this afternoon that she went to get the kids from school and came home, and there were fire trucks and police cars everywhere. A carpet cleaning van was parked out there and she said Mark said there was just this huge loud explosion and the van was on fire oh wow <laughs> so oh how terrible yeah ah uh, so I don't know what happened with man, the carpet cleaner yeah, van but that's not cool. anyway pretty scary that is not yeah. cool yeah so anyway uh, Melissa says her dog Calypso Calypso I guess she named her it, him. <laughs> the dog. The dog, yes. <laughs> anyway, so yes, it's cold here and it's going to get colder. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Everybody's going to get cold. Everybody's going to get cold. <laughs> this is covering the whole United States, mm -hmm. I think, pretty much. I but it's so. time for winter to get here. I mean, it's mid-November. Let's, yeah. let's get on with the program. Well, they said on the news last night that the um, average day of <clears throat> the first freeze is the eleventh. Yeah. So we're right on target. Yeah. When I was when I was growing up out west, it was uh, we had a frost by the thirty first every year, but that has mm -hmm. gotten less. Mm -hmm. Farther and farther. Farther yeah. and farther down the road. Yay! Brady on. Bunch is here. Yay! Yay! Hi guys. And I saw the video where Mr. Colson was walking. Mr. Colson is a walker now. He, your life has changed forever. Forever. And ever. <laughs> Nothing will ever be the same again. So. Ever well, again. Good. Ever, yeah. ever. Okay. That's right. I'm, I'm reading, so I'm halfway listening to what you're saying. Okay. I get that a lot. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I had the neatest uh, treat today. We did. Um. My mama called me about 11 o'clock this morning, and she said, what are you doing? I said, well, nothing right now, you know. And, and um, she says, well, I, I thought I'd come see you. And I thought, well, how odd. I said, why? <laughs> and she <laughs> laughed, and she said, well, do you not want me to? And I said, well, yes, I want you to, but why? She said, I just want to come visit for a couple of hours. So she drove over, and we visited, and Kenneth came in hungry, so we had a sandwich and a Dr. Pepper, and visited some more, and we just had a good time with mm -hmm. Mother, and that's a, about a 100% improvement over where she was 
about what six seven weeks ago mm -hmm. when she was in very bad condition in the hospital and she drove herself over today and as far as I know that's the first out-of-town trip that she's taken mm -hmm. um, and she did very well so Maybe that was she, a treat. Maybe she was just experimenting, seeing what she that could do. That might have been there. part of it, yeah. But it was a good visit. We had a good oh, time. Oh, good. Dan is here. Yay. Gimme, Gimme is at the third grade Veterans Day program. Well, that's where Gimme needs to be. Yes. That, that sounds about as much fun as pulling teeth, but that's where <laughs> she needs to be. Yes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm so glad y'all are here. Yeah, absolutely. Every single one of you. We're glad yeah, you're here. Absolutely. Uh, now that y'all are getting online, let me remind you, uh, free series for the month. Uh, it, I believe it's a five-message uh, series on the goodness of God. Go to the website, uh, download it again for free, and I think you'll enjoy it. I think it'll be mm -hmm. a blessing for you. Also, if you have not signed up for the Seeds of Victory Global Bible Study Facebook page, I want to encourage you, go to the website and do that. Uh, it really is a cool tool mm -hmm. of ministry mm -hmm. and fellowship mm -hmm. and um, people just hanging out with one another, fellowshipping with one another. And it's an opportunity if you've got a prayer request and you don't want it to be public, uh, your Bible study family can pray with you about it. If you want to just get on there and rant and rave and vent, if you've got a mm -hmm. if you've got a Bible study question, mm -hmm. um, you know if I don't have the answer, I know Carl does. So <laughs> um, get yes. on <laughs> mm -hmm. get online and and uh, sign up for that. <coughs> I believe it'll be a blessing to you. Um, that's all I can think of so far. Oh, um, may make note the twenty fifth of November. We will not be having Bible study. Mm -hmm. That is the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. And ordinarily there's just so much hustle and bustle and people have things going on and relatives coming in and getting ready for Thanksgiving and all that kind of stuff. We're going to dismiss for the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, just like we did last year. So, isn't that cool, Bev? Was it just like we did last year. That's cool. <laughs> we've been we've doing been, this over a year. We've been doing this over a year. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we're not going to meet the 25th of November. And so mark that, you know, so that you don't... Two weeks from tonight. Two weeks from tonight. Mm -hmm. We'll meet one more time, and then we will dismiss for Thanksgiving. So... Please mark that and all that. So you got any other announcements? Anything else? Well, Trixie says she has a testimony and Nicolaine is here. Yay, Good. Nicol, I'm glad you're Kiss here. Kiss my Z. I'm glad you're here. And um, Dan said Buster is asleep. Buster um, is shivering. It's cold for Buster. Wrap that baby in a blanket. <laughs> Throw him outside. <gasps> oh, no. No, no, no. Okay, we got to hear what Trixie's right, saying. What's the testimony? What you got, Trixie? She says, I was starting to get a scratchy throat and getting a bit of a cough. The other night, I decided that I was not going to put up with that anymore. Keith hmm. was asleep next to me. So I whispered, you have no right to be in my body and Jesus declared me healed on the cross. Yes. I told that cough to go away. The next morning when I woke up, it was gone. Yay! What a testimony. Praise the Lord. That's awesome. Good, 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 and good. The, the, good. The whispering, that's good. That really is a, that, mm -hmm. that uh, there is a testimony in that because it's not the volume of your mm -hmm. voice. People think that, you know, if they're going to deal with the devil, they got to shout and scream and throw a fit and do somersaults and all that kind of stuff. It's the authority that you have in your heart. Mm -hmm. And, the, you know, it'll, it'll carry through mm -hmm. even if it is a whisper. It will carry through. It's, it's a spiritual mm -hmm. thing. It's not a volume thing. Mm -hmm. So what a tremendous testimony. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. We, um, <coughs> we, well, I say we. There was a woman in ministry back in the 80s, Stephanie Busada.
and she was a singer and she said she was sick and she was laying on the couch and her little boy was three or four years old and um, she said come lay hands on mommy and pray I'm really sick and the little boy goes over there and lays his hand on his mama and he said fee fi fo fum e-i-e-i-o be healed in Jesus name <laughs> And she got up healed. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> yeah. Be by me, I, 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 oh, be healed. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that's kind of like we've, we've got some we've got some young men come, that have started coming to church. Um, Carl has started ministering to them, but they're from uh, Myanmar, which is mm -hmm. formerly Burma. And so their names are Sean... It's Tu Tan Me Sean and T. Okay. I have to do it in I'm order. I have to do. I have to get named. Name. Anyway, what made me think of that mm -hmm. when he was eating fee fi fo fo me I, I, We were telling Nicole about these guys coming in their names, and she said, "You mean kind of like Do Re Mi Fa So La Ti Do?" <laughs> <laughs> that was good, Nick. That was good. So it takes us a while to learn their names. <coughs> well, it. it does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it? To put the names with the faces and all uh -huh. that, it takes yeah. a little bit. So. Yeah. But we're glad they came oh, and they're absolutely. coming back. So we're thrilled about that. Yeah, and as far as we know, Patrick will be here the 23rd uh -huh. from the UK. So that will be good. Mm -hmm. That will be pretty cool. So that will be fun. And we, we're working on putting together uh, the stuff to do a baptism. So that ought to be interesting. Mm -hmm. be very. So good. don't miss it. It's going to be <coughs> yeah, fun. It will be. Yeah. It will be good. Okay. Anything else? We got anybody? Anything well, I think online? mostly everybody's talking to each other. Oh. I think nobody's paying attention to me. <laughs> nobody's yes. listening to me. <laughs> yes, they are. Um, but they're talking to each other too. So. Um, oh, I think it's great. Oh, thank you, Trixie. Uh, Dan said to her, um, "Add a girl, Trix," and she says, "Thanks, Dan. I've learned so much from these beautiful people. Yay. Thank you, Trixie. Praise that is God. a blessing. That is." The greatest compliment anyone can mm -hmm. give us is that you have learned how to walk with God and you have learned to stand in the blessing, to walk in the blessing, to stand in your authority, yeah. to operate in the covenant that you have with God in greater fullness and that you're continuing to grow and increase, that's the greatest compliment we can receive. Oh, and absolutely. That's fulfilling what we're called mm -hmm. to do. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Absolutely. Okay, are we good? I think so. Awesome. Trixie says, I'm listening, Can I, I don't want to miss it. <laughs> well, we're going to get into it tonight. And we Lisa really H. Are. is here. Hey, Lisa. Yay. Lisa good. H., have you heard any more from Patrick? Yeah, because he had On a the, black eye. Yeah, he, for those, burglars came in. Yeah, and, a bunch of meth heads tried to rob his place, and he went in there. And and he got a black eye. I guess he subdued them because <laughs> they're now in jail. So. Evidently. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. We ready? Before we get started, what, what? Uh, just before we uh, went online tonight, um, there was a note from Frances. Oh, yeah. As you know, her son, John, a month ago had a horrible wreck and he's in rehab in Dallas uh, learning relearning to walk um, most of you have kept up with what has been going on with John the baby that Stephanie was carrying his wife she lost the baby last week <clears throat> and then Francis posted just a little bit ago that uh, Piper, the little girl who was with her dad in that wreck a month ago, she had a cough and and stuff, and kept her up all I night. That was Hayden. Was it Hayden? That's right. Hayden. Was That's right. It was Hayden. Hayden. That's right. Sorry. Anyway, um, she took Piper to the, uh, the 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 doctor, and on the way back, Stephanie had a wreck and totaled her car. So Francis asks for prayer for that whole family because it's just literally been one 
horrible thing right after another. Mm -hmm. So let's pray for them mm -hmm. and pray for Francis. Francis has not been home since John had the wreck. She's been at the hospital and taking care of the babies in Stephenville. So she's not been home. So let's pray for Francis, okay. for John and Stephanie. Father, in the name of yes, Jesus, Lord. we just come before you. Yes. And Father, I lift up Francis, I lift up John, I lift up Stephanie, I hold them up before the throne of grace. Father, Francis has been a partner with this ministry for a very, very long time. And Father, we know that your blessing goes to the third and the fourth generation. So we lift up Francis, we lift up her son John, we lift up her daughter-in-law Stephanie, we lift, lift up the children, the grandchildren, and in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we take authority over the curse that has tried to come against this family. We break the strategy and yes, operation yes, of the enemy yes, in the name yes, of the Lord the Jesus of Christ Jesus. of Nazareth. We command you in Jesus' name to yes, cease and desist. Name. In your maneuvers against these people in and Jesus against this name, family in Jesus' name. And Father, I minister your strength to Francis. Father, I thank you that you're continuing to do a work in yes, John. Yes. And Father, I minister your peace right now mm -hmm. to Stephanie. Yes, in the name Lord. of the yes, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I take authority over every spirit of fear and trauma that has come against her. And in Jesus' name, I break, I break that attack and strategy of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Father, I just thank you for peace. I thank you for rest. And I thank you for supernatural turnaround. I thank you that this test is turning into a testimony in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father, when it's all said and done, every single one of them will be able to say, Look what the Lord Amen. has done. Yes, yes. Father, we thank you for it. Yes. In yes, Jesus' name. Yes, yes. Amen. 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 And let's all be sure <laughs> to pray. Anytime Francis or John or Stephanie mm -hmm. comes across your mind, even if it's just a sentence or two, please pray for them. Yes. Amen. And please continue to pray for Dan and Shasta for complete and total restoration wholeness victory and victory in Jesus name also for Roy and Mary Jo yeah and for their complete and total healing and, and restoration his yes. operation done December on the, 8th. the 8th yay he will have knee revision on December the 8th and I'm just thrilled that this is taking that it's place being done. yes mm -hmm. and I as much as we're happy I know Roy is thrilled mm -hmm. um Absolutely. he's been in Horrific pain for quite some time. This knee has been really, really bad. So this is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, my son, Mark, is uh, sick again with strep throat, as is Angela, his wife, which is Roy and Mary Jo's daughter. And Morgan has been sick with strep throat, so let's continue to pray for them. So let's hold one another up, and, and, and even if it's, again, if it's just a sentence or two, doesn't Hold one much. another. It doesn't take much of all of us coming into agreement and all of us praying in faith. Mm -hmm. The Lord is moving in the behalf of everyone. Mm -hmm. We're a family. That's right. We love each other and we're a family. And we stand together, we pray together, and we see the victory together. Amen. 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 So are we ready? I think so. Okay. Oh, wait just a minute, wait just a minute. Melissa says Gabe is here and wants to say hi. Hey, Gabe. Hey, Gabe. Hey, I have missed you. Hey, man. Oh, my goodness, I've good missed to hear from you. you buddy. Yeah, I'm glad awesome. you're here. All right. Very so, good. Very um, good. All right, let me. I think we're ready, so go ahead, and if we have something, I'll, I'll let you know. Uh, oh, she says, uh, wait, <laughs> wait. <laughs> we got to take care of business here. Lisa says uh, Patrick will be on his way Friday. Oh, he is excellent. much better. Good, 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 good. So he had a nice little shiner on Facebook. So good. Very good. Yes. Excellent. Um, I thought of something else, but I forgot now, but I'm sure it will come up. Come, up come back later. around. It will come up 
again later, but I can't think Amen. of what it Elaine is. Elaine is here. Hey, Elaine. Yay. I'm glad you made it. Awesome. Yeah. Very good. Very Excellent. good. Okay, now I think we can go. Are we good? I think. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Very good. Yeah. Um, let me do an adjustment here just very quickly. All right. Oh, thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Listen, um, again, so for those of you uh, closet watchers on Facebook, let us know you're watching, mm -hmm. please. Mm -hmm. If you're watching by archive, let us know. Mm -hmm. We just want to know how this outreach is doing. And, uh, you know, if you, you guys that are watching, that are receiving from uh, the webcast, man, let mm -hmm. people know. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's time, I believe it's time for this thing to expand. Yes, it is. Some. Yes, it this, is. This is a tool of ministry, not just for us, but for you guys as well. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, use it as such. But uh, pray about it and, and just see, well, Lord, is there some way that I can help expand this webcast? Whether mm -hmm. just telling somebody about it or inviting somebody to the house or, you know, whatever. Um, but... Let's let's stand together. It's time for the family to mm -hmm. grow. I was praying about that this morning. <clears throat> it's time for the it's family time to grow. For us mm -hmm. to stretch. Yeah, I agree. Amen. Amen. Well, let's, let's do pray. It. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come before yes, you. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father, thank for the you, spirit Lord. of wisdom yes. and revelation being made manifest. I thank mm -hmm. you, Father, for free flow of your word and of your spirit. We just give you the praise and the honor for it in Jesus' yes. name. Amen. Amen. All right, I want Amen. you to go with me, please, to Galatians chapter 5. We're going to read a very familiar passage of Scripture. We're going to begin with the 22nd verse. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about some things that we've discussed before. And we're going to use it as a groundwork to get into some stuff. I don't think I've ever talked about before. Uh, but we're going from the known to the unknown. So, mm -hmm. Galatians chapter 5. In Galatians 5, beginning the 22nd verse, you have what's known as the listing of the fruit of the Spirit. So let's begin reading with verse 22. It says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Now, probably one of the most familiar passages of Scripture in the Bible, it looks like I'm going to have to set something up here. Forgive me for just a second. When we had so much trouble with uh, the internet starting off. I had to reset everything. And I want to be able to share these scriptures with you. So give me just a moment to set this up. We started late because... I had some issues, like I said, we had issues with the internet, so, thank you, Lord. There we go, thank you, Lord. All right, probably one of the most familiar passages in the Bible is John 3.16. <laughs> said, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. I want you to take note of that phrase, everlasting life. Another verse of Scripture that, that goes right along with it. Back up here. John chapter 10. Verse 10 says, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life. life 
and that they might have it more, more abundantly. abundantly. Amen. Now, <clears throat> when you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, that life was imparted into your spirit. Like we just read in John 3.16, said you received everlasting life. Here he said, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Mm -hmm. As we've talked about, the Greek word that is used there is zoe, Z-O-E. And when we are talking about zoe, we are not, we're not just talking about living forever. I realize it's translated eternal life, it's translated everlasting life. But when you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, that is not when you, um, how can I say it? That's not when you get some sort of a pass to live eternally. Because you're going to live eternally by virtue of the fact that you are a spirit being. We are eternal spirit beings. Mm -hmm. When it says that you receive Zoe or you receive eternal life, everlasting life, what it is referring to is the life and the nature of God. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, in verse 17, says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Not only that, the Apostle Peter said in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 4, he said, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these mm -hmm. you might be partakers of, of the, the divine, divine nature. nature. Now Amen. that is Zoe. Mm -hmm. That is the receiving of the life of God. It is becoming a partaker of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now, here in Galatians 5, <clears throat> says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, mm -hmm. gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no, no law. law. Mm -hmm. Now, when you take all nine of these elements that Paul listed here in Galatians 5, you put them all together, what you have are the nine elements or the nine primary elements that constitute the Zoe life of God. So when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, those nine elements are imparted inside your spirit. The love, the joy, the peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. All nine of these elements are put inside your spirit in the new birth. But when they are put on the inside of you, it's important that you understand that they are put in there in an underdeveloped, immature condition. But it's also important that you understand that when those things are imparted on the inside of you, and Brother Copeland summed it up so well in a statement I heard him make well over 20 years ago. He said, when a man is born again, there is no such thing as spiritual birth defects. When you're born again, you receive the life and nature of God, and these nine elements are put inside of your spirit, and when they are put in there, you don't get defective love. You don't get defect, defective joy or defective mm -hmm. peace. There is absolutely nothing mm -hmm. defective in these spiritual elements. In other words, when you're born again, everything you need for life and for victory is already put on the inside of you. They're placed in there mm -hmm. when you receive Jesus. The key issue is, is that they must be developed. As they are developed, as they begin to grow and mature, that, that, they become spiritual forces that work in your life. And each one of them have different assignments. Each one of them have different things that they are designed to accomplish and as they grow let me say it to you this way uh, 
they are put in there in an immature state. The Bible tells us that when you and I are first born again, or were first born again, we were spiritual babies. And so we have to grow, we have to develop, we have to mature, we have to develop the fruit of the Spirit on the inside of us. Now, when it comes to, for example, physical development, when you have a little baby that is born into the earth and they are born healthy, there's no defect, there's no problem, there's no issue. In order for that baby to develop, there has to be three things. There has to be food. There has to be exercise. Those muscles have to be developed. And thirdly, when it comes to the physical body, the physical body will grow with time. But when it comes to spiritual things, the same thing is true, first of all, in that there has to be food. Well, what is, our, what is the food of the reborn human spirit? Well, it's the Word, it's the word of God. Uh, the Apostle Peter said, as newborn babes desire the mm -hmm. sincere milk of the Word that you may grow thereby. So there is the food of the Word. Secondly, there has to be exercise. And uh, I said Sunday that you, that you exercise your spirit through prayer, and that's, that's true. Uh, but you also exercise your spirit in resisting the things that you've been redeemed from. I mean, even something as, as simple as what Trixie shared earlier with the cough, just, you know, whispering, you don't have any right to exist in my body. You were exercising your spiritual muscles. Mm -hmm. And the, every single time that you gain a victory in a given area, you, you gain strength in that area. Mm -hmm. You gain experience and you gain strength and you become more solid in that particular area. So there is spiritual exercise through prayer. There is spiritual exercise through re resistance to the things that we've been redeemed from. But there is one major difference between spiritual growth and physical growth. Physical growth has the factor of time in it, like I just said. A baby grows over a, over a period of time. When it comes to spiritual growth, time is not a factor. You know Christians, and so do I, that have been born again for 40 years, but they never developed. Mm -hmm. They never matured. They're as big a spiritual babies as they were when they received Jesus. Mm -hmm. They've never grown, they've never developed, and they've never matured. They've never spent time in the Word. They haven't exercised their spirit in any way, and they've never developed the divine nature of God on the inside of them. You know, it's kind of like the old joke of some guy said, I've been in the way for 40 years. Yeah, you have. <laughs> right in the way. <laughs> and there's a lot of immature Christians in the body of Christ. So time is not the issue. Uh, but I will tell you that in place of time, one of the things that develops your spirit, is food, the Word, uh, the exercise of prayer, and resistance to what we've been redeemed from. And thirdly, one of the things that develops your spirit, man, is experience. And it kind of all kind of all runs together. Mm -hmm. There are some things um, that your spirit man develops in by experience that you're not you don't get it any other way. You're not going to get it off a of tape or a CD or mm -hmm. a reading somebody's book. Thank God for all the stuff that's out there. But there are some things that your spirit man will never develop into and will never grow into until you just walk through it and grow through it. Mm -hmm. So experience is a factor as well where those things are concerned. Now, we got any questions or comments or anything? Mm -hmm. Jackie's here. Hey, Jackie, I'm glad you're with us. Glad you made Yay. it, Jackie. I'm glad you're here. Awesome. All right, now, back up here... 
to verse 22 for just a second. I've shared this with you before, but let me bring it up to you again. Verse 22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. As I've shared many, many times through the years, in the Greek text, there is no punctuation. In fact, if you look at if you look at what was called Koine Greek or Common Greek that the New Testament was written in, it all looks like capital letters. Um, there was no capitalization in the Greek, and there was no punctuation in the Greek, and so punctuation, capitalization, all had to be added at the discretion of the translators. And if you have a King James Bible, you'll notice, and maybe other translations as well, uh, the word spirit there is capitalized. And they say, well, it's the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Well, no, this is not His fruit. He is these things. He is God. Now, the Holy Spirit was sent to be your teacher, your guide, your comforter, your standby, your counselor, your helper, all these wonderful things. But He was not sent to bear your fruit. He has been sent to help you bear fruit. This is not His fruit. This is your fruit. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. So this is not the fruit of the Holy Spirit. This is the fruit of the reborn human spirit that has the life and nature of God in it. And we are the ones that are responsible to develop these spiritual elements. Now, in this listing, you have the fruit of the Spirit is love. God is love. The second one is joy. And that's where I want to center up on. That's what we're going to talk about tonight is the force of joy. I thought it was very interesting. I've, I've studied the joy a lot, the subject of joy. I started studying it many years ago. But I I never really paid a lot of attention to it in the Greek. But I was looking it up Saturday and noticed this, that the Greek word for joy is spelled C-H-A-R-A. If you're making notes, I encourage you to write that down. C-H-A-R-A. What struck me as interesting about that word, it, it's C-H-A-R-A, but it is pronounced hurrah! <laughs> <laughs> and I think you can see how that easily translates over into, or transitions over into English. Hurrah! When the joy of the Lord is working, hurrah! <laughs> it's a word... Now listen, listen to the definition of this word hurrah in the Greek. It's joy, gladness, and delight that comes from an experience or an influence. It's joy, gladness, and delight that comes from an experience or an influence. You know, we for, for a lot of years we talked about people, we want people to have aha moments. Mm -hmm. You know, we see something out of the Word. Aha! Mm -hmm. We live for that. But I think mm -hmm. we need to change it to hurrah moments. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had a joy moment. I had a hurrah Amen. moment. But it is joy gladness and delight that comes from an experience or influence. Now, I'm going to give you some things that... Uh, I'm sorry I didn't go full screen, by the way. I was going to and forgot. Um, I want to give you some things that um, can produce joy. 
Robert's here. Hey, Roberto. Hey, my brother. I'm glad you made it. Yay. Joy, first of all, can come from the influence of the Spirit of God. Romans 14, 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy, joy in, the Holy in the Holy Ghost. So righteousness, or excuse me, joy can come from the influence of the Spirit of God. Joy can come from the Word. Jeremiah 15, 16. We're going to get over into this one big time in just a second. Said, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. Also, joy can come from experiencing the miraculous. Acts 8, 5 through 8 says, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, and he spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. So joy can come from experiencing the miraculous. Joy can come by choosing to rejoice by faith. First Peter 1 Peter 1.8 says, Whom having not seen you love, talking about the Lord, whom having not seen you love, in whom though now you see him not yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. So joy can come from choosing to rejoice by faith. Joy can come from fellowship with other believers who are of the same spirit of faith. Joy can come from fellowship with other believers who are of the same spirit of faith. Now, I think the last part of that is very important. Who are of the same <laughs> spirit of faith. Because I've been around a lot of believers that, that didn't produce any joy because they were not of the same spirit of faith. First John 1, 3 and 4 says, That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. Amen. Man, there's joy that comes with fellowship from mm -hmm. other believers that are the same spirit of faith. <coughs> We've met people that, you know, meet them somewhere at a convention or whatever, and or you end up having dinner with them. We met one lady that, that um, um, actually lived very close to where Patrick does in the U.K. when we mm -hmm. were at Believers Convention. Mm -hmm. And we sat down and visited with her for two hours, and just it was like we'd known her for years. Well, what's the deal? We are the same spirit of faith. Mm -hmm. And just had a marvelous mm -hmm. time. So it's just tremendous. We got any questions or comments or anything? Uh, Melissa comments, My chalkboard quote, Today I will choose joy. The kids keep asking me if I'm going to change it. Told I can't until I get it right. <laughs> what, man, what a cool confirmation. And um, that is, then she says, That is cool. Her system just went down again. I guess her internet went down. Uh, Dan says that would be this group. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good point. Good point. Good Trixie point. Trixie says Good that's point. what I was saying too, Dan. We have like minds tonight. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Being of the same spirit of faith, and um, it that's and and it's it, a lot of it. Yeah, it has to do with the Bible study. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you what's cool. I just, this, the Lord's bringing this up. You know, the the particular segment of the body of Christ that we've been involved with for years, we've met some neat people involved. But I was thinking back, you know, we went over to a <clears throat> minister's conference with James Robinson back 
Several. Mm, my was, goodness, a long read. time it was ago. 1998, summer of 98. And um, that, you know, nothing against, you know, nothing against James Robinson. Just we never fellowshiped with that segment of the body of Christ very much. We got over there and just had a tremendous time. Mm -hmm. Just a tremendous time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In fact, we wound up sitting next to James and Betty practically through the whole conference. Just that, that's where they seated. That's us. where they seated us, mm -hmm. and. Uh, <laughs> Several years later, our friends, our pastor from Ireland contacted us, and it was on YouTube. The praise and worship was on YouTube, and he saw us sitting next to James and Betty. Oh, my Lord, they're sitting next to James and Betty Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> that was too funny. Mm -hmm. But it, just a tremendous time of fellowship. Just mm -hmm. wonderful. So, yeah, part of it has to do with receiving from the same... Uh, mm -hmm. teaching ministry and so forth, but that's not necessarily the case. Mm -hmm. It's just being of the same spirit of faith. And wherever Jesus is Lord, if you got people that are sincere and that's truly who they're uplifting, mm -hmm. they're not uplifting their denomination or their doctrine or their this or their that, mm -hmm. man, you can have some wonderful fellowship with right. them. Because you're fellowshipping in the Lordship of Jesus. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right, mm -hmm. anything else? Nope, that's it. All right. Now, again, let me remind you, you can receive joy through fellowship. And, and kind of like what you're saying, Dad, it's divine connection. Mm -hmm. It's divine connection being made. Mm -hmm. Now, most of you are familiar with the fact that joy is designed to produce strength. The classic scripture on it, Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10, says the, jo the last part of that verse says, For the joy of the Lord is your mm -hmm. strength. Um, but the, you need to know this. The strength that joy produces always comes from unity and harmony. I'm going to say that again. The strength that joy produces always comes from unity and harmony. You guys already know this. You know it, you, you know it in your own experience. You know it because the Word of God teaches it that unity or harmony strengthens. Strife weakens. It's just that simple. The Apostle Paul <clears throat> said this about it. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 25 and 26, he made just a very, he made a very alarming statement. He's talking about false teachers and so forth and what, how Timothy needed to handle them. 2 Timothy 2, 25 and 26 says, In meekness instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. If the enemy can so strive, then he can weaken. Mm -hmm. If he can weaken, then he can come take you to the cleaners any time he wants to. Mm -hmm. That's his strategy. Divide and conquer. We're going to deal more with that in just a second. Um, but unity and harmony produces strength. Now, I'll just, I'll just make this statement to you. I've, I may have talked about it before. I don't remember. But... <clears throat> it's important that you realize this. The power of God, God's awesome, omnipotent power comes from the unity of the Godhead. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit are in complete, total unity and harmony with one another. And that unity and harmony 
between the three persons of the Godhead is what produces and releases God's power. And it's what, it's, it's what uh, releases that power in such tremendous strength. So again, the power of God comes from the unity of the Godhead. Now that's really pretty amazing when you start thinking about, for example, the earthly ministry of Jesus. Because Jesus, <clears throat> in his 33 and a half years on this earth, walked in total agreement and harmony with the Father. Mm -hmm. He said in John chapter 5, verse 19, in fact, you read this out of the Passion this morning. John 5, 19. Um, says, Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing <coughs> of himself. Mm -hmm. What he sees, the Father do. Mm-hmm. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. And then in John 10.30, he just very simply said, I and the Father are, are one. one. Period. Thirty-three and a half years in complete, <laughs> total harmony with the Father. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that he was tempted in all parts like as we are, mm -hmm. yet without sin. He never stepped out of line, not one time. Mm -hmm. And he had the, the God-given right as a, as a human being with the ability to choose and, and free wills, a free moral agent. He had the right <clears throat> to act independently of the Father. If he didn't, then the temptation from the enemy wouldn't have been valid. Mm-hmm. But it was valid. Mm -hmm. He could have failed. He could have blown it. But here's mm -hmm. the deal. If he would have missed it one time, one time, one bobble, one little sin, it wouldn't have just been the end of redemption. If he would have missed it one time, it would have destroyed this universe and actually gone further than that because God said, God told Abraham, you can read it in the, the uh, sixth chapter of Hebrews. He said, if I break my covenant with you, said the, the Bible said, because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself. In other words, he told Abraham, he said, if I ever break my covenant with you, I will destroy myself. And let me tell you something. If God ever checked out, if God ever said, I'm done, we all done. This thing would have just totally just imploded on itself. And it wouldn't have been the destruction of this planet or really even the destruction of the universe. It would have created a total vacuum of nothingness forever. Check to make sure our internet is on. Okay, yes. We're good? We're still still showing that we're on, yes. Because all of my chat disappeared and it won't let me chat. Okay. I don't know what's up with that. Let us know how you guys are doing out there. If you're having some trouble with the internet, we still show an internet access. So you may need to reboot I don't know. Okay. So, but this thing would have been totally wiped out. It would have been totally gone. Of course, I guess if you don't have chat, you can't talk to us. Uh-uh. Okay. Go you, ahead. All right. You might try and reboot and, and see because we're showing, and I have no uh, warnings. I have nothing. Okay, we're good. So, uh, here's Dan. Okay, good. Okay. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah. <laughs> if God... Checked out. Checked out. Yeah. That's where you were. Yeah. 
That would have been it. That would have been it. That would have been all of it. Mm -hmm. Again, joy or the strength that comes from joy is always the result of unity and harmony. Now, when... Uh, well, let me come at it from the from this angle. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23. It says, "May the God of peace sanctify you wholly Holy. or completely." Mm -hmm. I pray God your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. You are a spirit. We've talked about this before. You are a spirit. You have a soul. Your soul is made up of your mind, your emotions, and your will, and you live inside a physical body. When Satan comes against you, he is there to divide you in those three areas. When he hits you with temptation, when he hits you with pressure, when he hits you with uh, pressure, circumstances, uh, sickness, whatever it may be. His objective is to divide your, divide your human trinity. <laughs> now I'll tell you, if you're born again, you've received Jesus, you're a partaker of the divine nature, your spirit always wants to obey God. Because your spirit has the life and nature of God on the inside of it, you know that you, you you know when you're being tempted that that part of you that wants to do the right thing and obey God that is your spirit. Then mm -hmm. you have your soul. Your soul is made up of your mind, your emotions, and your will. But when you get under temptation, and we've all been there, where at that moment of pressure, at that moment of temptation, your spirit is wanting to obey God, but your mind and your emotions may be going 180 degrees the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. Your mind and emotions are absolutely going haywire, and you're wanting to go cuckoo over this thing. So you got your heart going one direction, you got your mind and your emotions going another direction, and your body going a third direction. A lot of times the reaction is, well, you know, just go veg out in front of the TV or head to the refrigerator or the bourbon jug or the Xanax box. See? So Satan's objective is to divide and conquer. But when the joy of the Lord is in operation, joy brings the human trinity into line and into harmony with itself and into harmony with God. And when your human trinity begins to flow in harmony with the Word of God and flows in harmony with itself, then it produces strength. It releases strength into your life. So we got any comments or anything so far everybody got, you got chat i've got chat but the, <coughs> okay everything that was on there went away okay <clears throat> all right now that is what the force of joy is designed to do it's designed to align the human trinity so that it flows in harmony with the word of god with the spirit of god with uh with itself so that it becomes a conduit a conduit of the strength of God. Now, what I want to talk to you about tonight is the three stages of joy. In fact, that's the, that's the title of the message. The three stages of joy. And I'll just give you these three and then you can have them as a just a basic outline as we go into this. The three stages of joy are, number one, discovery. Number two, strength. And number three, authority. Discovery strength and authority. Now, I want you to turn with me to two places. And I want you to look both of them up, if you will. Go with me to Matthew 
chapter 13 and also to Proverbs chapter 2. Go ahead and look both of those up. Matthew chapter 13. We're going to read the 44th verse. Matthew chapter 13 and Proverbs chapter 2. Give you a chance to look that up. We got any questions or comments? Uh-uh. You got any comments? Uh-uh. No? Uh-uh. I think you're fibbing. <laughs> On the internet, you're fibbing. No. No? I'm not. You're not? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm listening. All right. All right. <coughs> All right. Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. Jesus is given an illustration of the kingdom of God. He said, again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a treasure hid in a field. The which when a man has found, he hides, and for joy thereof goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Now you'll notice he found the field. And for joy, he went and sold all that he had and bought that field. Now you notice he said there, again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a treasure hid in a field, the which when a man has found. Mm-hmm. Now hold your place there in Matthew 13 and go over to Proverbs chapter 2 now. Don't lose your place in Matthew 13. This is Bible study. Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 1. Solomon said, My son, if you will receive my words and hide my commandments with you, so that you incline your ear unto wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Yea, if you cry after knowledge and lift up your voice for understanding. Look at verse 4. If you seek her as silver... And you notice, he said, when a man has found, in Matthew 13, if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hid treasure, then shall you understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Now again, the first stage of joy is discovery. He said, when a man has found, But here's what I want you to see. Discovery begins with searching. Discovery begins with searching. Statement number two. Searching begins with desperation. Discovery begins with searching, but searching begins with desperation. When you get desperate enough, you'll begin to search for answers. Somebody said to John Hagee, <laughs> John Hagee one time, he said, I don't believe in miracles. He said, you will when you need one. <laughs> I love that. I love that answer. Mm-hmm. That is an absolute truth. You can... Theologically disagree, you know, I just, I don't believe miracles are for today. But you get in a situation where you need a miracle, you'll be surprised how your theology will change. Mm -hmm. Because you'll sit back and think, well, you know, maybe those Pentecostal idiots, maybe they've got something on the ball here when it's your last ray of hope that you need a miracle from God. Your theology will change very quickly. Desperation is what will make you search. And searching is what will produce discovery. And thank God we have the promise of Jesus. He that asks receive, receives. He that seeks finds. He that mm-hmm. knocks, it shall be opened to him. But it all begins with desperation. Desperation opens the door to searching 
searching produces discovery. We we looked at this verse. Oh, I didn't put it. I'll back up here for just a second. We looked at this verse earlier. Let me remind you of it. Look at what Jeremiah said. He said, Thy words were found. Apparently he was searching. And notice what he said. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. Now I realize this is an Old Testament scripture, but when you look at the Greek version of the Old Testament, which is the Septuagint, in the Greek version of the Old Testament, in Jeremiah fifteen sixteen, where he says, Your word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. That word joy is the exact same word in Galatians 5. Hurrah! Your word was the hurrah and rejoicing of my heart. He had an aha moment. See, when you discover the Word, it produces joy. Now, let's go back over here to Matthew 13 again. Matthew 13, <clears throat> verse 44 Pardon me. He said, Again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a treasure hid in a field, the which when a man has found. We don't know why this guy was out there, but I want to submit to you, he was out there looking for something because he was in a desperate situation. Desperation produces searching. Searching produces discovery. Notice what he went on, went on to say. Again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a treasure hid, hid in a field, the which when a man has found, he hides. Now that's important. He found this treasure, and then he hid it. Let me tell you something. When you are in a desperate situation, like John Hagee said, you won't believe in a miracle till you need one. And if you're in a situation where you've, you're desperate and you've gone to the Scriptures and you've been looking and you've been digging and God has shown you something from the Word and it answers the question, it, it, it produces joy and rejoicing, you have a hurrah moment and you've found from the Word, this is what we need to do. Be smart enough to hide that treasure. Don't call everybody in town and tell them what you got from God because I promise you Satan cometh immediately to take away the word that's sown in the heart and if you go broadcast it to everybody in town, somebody will try and talk you out of it. Oh, now that's silly. You know that's not going to work. That's just absolute foolishness. You've gone off the, the Pentecostal diving board, you idiot that's not going to work you need to be realistic you need to have some wisdom about, about all this hide the treasure you remember Jesus said well you're right there in the, the uh, 40 read the next verse verse 45 again the kingdom of heaven is likened to a merchant man seeking godly pearls or goodly pearls who when he has found one pearl of great price went and sold all that he had and bought it well, do you remember Jesus made the statement? He said, don't cast your pearls before swine. When you find those goodly pearls out of the Word of God, don't cast your pearls before swine. Now, Jesus used that terminology on purpose because, as you know, the swine, the pig, is an unclean animal to the Jew. And also, in, in, particularly in Jesus' day, in Jewish vernacular, since the, the pig was, was not kosher, was an unclean animal, they referred to the Gentiles as pigs. They referred to the Gentiles as swine. And the, the Gentile, the Gentile is not just a non-Jewish person. A Gentile is a person who does not know God, 
has no relationship to God, and has no covenant with God. And what Jesus was saying is when you find a goodly pearl out of your covenant, don't throw it to the Gentiles. Don't throw it to people that don't understand covenant. Don't throw it out to people that don't understand faith. Don't throw it out to people that don't have a clue what mm -hmm. you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Hide it. Protect it. Mm -hmm. Let it grow on the inside of you. You got anything? Okay. Any Anything online? Um, Melissa says, that is so good. Just heard that same thing in my devotional this week. And Dan says, wow, again. Awesome. But hang on to it. Be, be cautious. When you, when you get around people like we were talking about earlier, when you get around people that are the same spirit of faith, you want to talk about it with the family that will get in there and, you know, encourage you and, and stand with you and mm -hmm. help build on that. Yeah, mm -hmm. by all means, yeah. share it. But, my goodness, protect it from the world. Mm -hmm. Protect it from the world. Okay, mm -hmm. you got any... Well, it's not exactly what you're saying about casting your pearls before the the world. Um, but when I was first baptized in the Holy Spirit, I was 20 years old. Had been in the Baptist church my whole life. Yeah. And so I knew nothing except that I was baptized in the Holy Ghost and was able to speak in other tongues. Right. And so shortly after I was baptized in the Holy Ghost, I decided I need to have a Bible study with people who were baptized in the Holy Spirit. I don't remember who the other person was, but one of the persons that I invited to my house was my Pentecostal aunt, my Aunt Fanny, who went to the Assembly of God Church and we sat down at the table. It was my aunt and myself and one other lady. I don't remember who she was. And we sat down. And, of course, I understood that I could pray in tongues any time I wanted to. Mm -hmm. And I began to speak in other tongues. And she stopped and told me, no, 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 no. You can't just do that just any time. You, mm -hmm. you have to wait till the Spirit moves on you. And, you know, and she began to try to straighten out my theology. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, her theology was wrong. Right. Correct. Uh, she, she, she was only repeating what she had been taught, but what she had been taught mm -hmm. was wrong. Mm -hmm. That you had some sort of an unction, some sort of a feeling come on you before you could pray in other tongues. Uh, no, not true. Mm -hmm. And so for a period of time... That's Old Assembly of God Doctrine. That's Old Assembly of God Doctrine. And so for a period of time, I was afraid to pray in other tongues because she told me that, you know, that that was mm -hmm. dangerous ground <laughs> yeah. for you to just pray without yeah. the Spirit moving on you. Yeah, oh yeah. And, uh, that you know, that was just real serious and real dangerous ground. Well, I was afraid then until I got good teaching and I got with people that taught me correctly. Mm -hmm. So you have to be cautious. I just assumed everybody that was baptized in the Holy Ghost thought the same. Mm -hmm. Not true. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be cautious um, to be of the same spirit of faith. Yeah to be of the mm -hmm. same uh, the same understanding. Mm -hmm. yep. And you're not going to agree with everybody on everything. Well, and that but that goes back to you have to know what the word says. And you have to know what the word says mm -hmm. for yourself. Exactly. And and when, as you begin to learn and grow in the word and somebody comes up with something like what your aunt said, you can just look at them and smile and think you're ignorant. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, um, yeah, and that comes from knowing the Word and being be, being strong in the Word. <coughs> and, of course, at that point, I knew nothing. Yeah. All I knew was, let's go with this. Yeah. And, and so mm -hmm. uh, just make sure that who you're listening to is, mm -hmm. is uh, in line with the Word of God. Um, Dan says... This happened to me a lot when sharing with godly people. Yeah, yeah, they will rob you of your of your pearl. 
They will. And Trixie says, I'm surrounded in my house by be realistic people. It, it's hard to deal with. You're absolutely right. Yeah, it is, it <clears throat> is hard to deal with. And but and but here's here's the thing. There the thing about being a believer, and I heard Joyce Meyer make refer, Myers make reference to this. Being a Christian and walking with God is a balance between being idealistic and realistic. And God is not God is not pie in the sky. God God can see the mountains, he can see mm -hmm. the issues, he can see the problems. Mm -hmm. He knows the issues better than we do. So, you know, it's not just a you know, a Pollyanna attitude about mm -hmm. what life is all about. But it is a tough road to hope. It, mm -hmm. It's a tough path to walk. Trixie says, telling them my treasure discoveries is silliness because they shoot me down as fast as they can. Yeah, protect your, protect your, protect your pearls. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Jackie says, uh, I run into this in my own family, so I just keep this to myself. They tell me that that is not true, but so now I keep it to myself. God speaks to me about things in my life. Yeah. You you have to do that. You uh, have to do that. Dan says, I get theologically corrected by my more learned brethren. Sarcasm is intended. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Um, Shasta's home, yay. Hey, Shasta. So when you begin, and, and we have considerable experience in this, especially because we got baptized in the Holy Ghost back in the early years of the charismatic movement. Mm -hmm. And that was not accepted among the denominations. And so you you wanted everybody. That's why I got excommunicated from my church is because I just knew everybody wanted what I had experienced. I just knew that was what everybody was looking. No, they weren't. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. weren't. Yeah, protect, protect. And so you do have to protect, and you do, even if you only have one person you can share with, just use that one person to share those things with so that you don't open yourself up for the discouragement. Absolutely. Protect yourself. Protect your heart, Proverbs 4.23. Mm -hmm. Protect your heart with all diligence. Mm -hmm. All right. Verse 44 again. Again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a treasure hid in a field, the which when a man has found, he hideth, and for joy thereof, the joy of discovery, goes and sells all that he has and buys the field. Now, he sells all that he has and buys the field. Mm -hmm. Now listen to me very carefully. Every revelation from God, listen, every revelation from God will demand a shift in your values. Every revelation from God will demand a shift in your values. Jesus said this in uh, Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4, verses 23 and 24 in the King James said, If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto them, Take heed what you hear, with what measure mm -hmm. you meet, or with what measure you measure it. It shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear shall more be given. Listen to this 24th verse out of the Amplified. It says, And he said unto them, Be careful what you're hearing. Well, I didn't shoot it up there for you. Put it up there where you can read it. He said unto them, Be careful what you are hearing. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you. And more besides will be given to you who hear. So every revelation will demand a shift in your values. 
the value you place on the treasure will be determined by the price that you are willing to pay in obedience. Say that again. The value you place on the treasure will be determined by the price you are willing to pay in obedience. Now notice, he said, Again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a treasure hid in a field, of which when a man is found, he hides. And for joy, there goes and sells all that he has and buys the field. Make that statement again. The value you place on the treasure will be determined by the price you are willing to pay in obedience. The price of the field is obedience. The price of the field is obedience. If you want the treasure, you know the treasure is the answer, but if you want the treasure, if you want to own the treasure, you have to be willing to buy the field. And the price of the field is obedience. That's why Revelation demands a shift in your values. Now, this is what Jesus wanted to teach the rich young ruler. Go with me to Mark chapter 10. Melissa says, Ooh, you have to use what he told you, showed you. Exactly. She says, Man, 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 hitting it home over and over. Good. Uh, That's Trixie what we want. says she needs the first part one more time. The okay. Every rev start with every revelation from from okay. God. Every revelation from God will demand a shift in values. Every revelation from God will demand a shift in values. The value you place on the treasure will be determined by the price you are willing to pay in obedience. The price of the field is obedience. Okay, we good? I think so. Every <coughs> revelation from God will demand a shift in values. Mm-hmm. The value you place on the treasure mm -hmm. will be determined by the price you're willing to pay in obedience. obedience. That's right. The price of the field is it's obedience. obedience. Now, let's look at this with the rich young ruler. Verse 17, Mark chapter 10, verse 17 says, And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good Master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? You want the treasure, you've got to buy the field. When he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good Master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Now I want you to take note in verse 17. Here is a rich, young ruler. Here is a man that is probably well-dressed, well-groomed, uh, has very nice apparel on, but he runs to Jesus. He is running. He doesn't just walk up to him. He doesn't just tap him on the shoulder. He runs as hard as he can to Jesus and kneels down in the dirt and says to him, Good Master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Now, the, the, what I see in him running to Jesus like he did, I see two things. I see, first of all, a man who is desperate for answers in his life. He's looking for something. And it seems very apparent that to whatever extent he observed Jesus, he found the answer. Mm -hmm. 
And he came up, ran up to him, and he said, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Now, how would he know about eternal life? Well, I want to submit to you that he knew about eternal life because he probably heard Jesus preach about it. Because in John 6, 68, Peter said this but to Jesus. He said, Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Zoe. You have the words of Zoe life. I didn't put this in the list, but you could write this down. John 6, 63. Jesus said, The words I speak unto you, they are spirit, spirit. and they are and life. life. Amen. And I want to submit to you that this rich young ruler probably heard Jesus preach the word. He heard him preach the gospel and he realized, this is what I've been looking for. He is mm -hmm. desperate. He is hungry. He is thirsty. He is searching for answers. And he hears Jesus preach. And he runs to Jesus and falls at his feet and says, Good Master, what good thing shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Here is a man that has discovered the treasure. He's found what he's looking for. He's desperate, but at the same time, he's also joyful. I found it. What, what should I do? What do I need to do next? Okay. Notice. said, When he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good Master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, and that is God. He said, you know the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor your father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Now notice, just a second, that immediately Jesus began to talk to him about the commandments. Just take note of that. Verse 21. Said, then Jesus, beholding him, loved him. Ho, <laughs> ho, now, the, that is the key to that whole story. Jesus, beholding him, loved him. Now, the Bible does not say what he did. What he did to demonstrate his love to this man. I believe, and this is just my personal opinion, if you look in all three accounts of the rich young ruler in the Gospels, this account, in all three, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, where it's recorded... It, it comes on the heels of Jesus taking the little children in his arms and blessing them. I personally believe that when it says he beholding him loved him, I am convinced Jesus probably just wrapped his arm around him and blessed him. That's what I believe happened. But whether he did or not, we know from Mark's account he did something that demonstrated that he loved him. Now, we have already talked about and discussed, talking about for several weeks about the love circuit. 1 John 4.19 says what? We love him because he first, first loved, loved us. us. He beholding him loved him. He loved him first. Mm -hmm. But then Jesus gives him a command. Jesus, beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing you lack, go your way, sell whatsoever you have, give to the poor, and you'll have treasure in heaven, and come, take up your cross, and follow me. Now, we love him because he first loved us. Jesus has reached out in love and now he has given a command and he is expecting this man to reciprocate. John 14, 15, Jesus said, If you love me, keep my commandments. Jesus is trying to create this love circuit here. Our contact with God and the miraculous comes through that love circuit. Jesus has extended the love and now he's giving the man the opportunity to return that love. Okay? 
So he's given this command here. But now notice. <clears throat> Jesus, beholding him, loved him. Verse 21, said unto him, One thing you lack, go your way, sell whatsoever you have, give to the poor, you'll have treasure in heaven. He did not say, give me all your money. In fact, he told him to leave. Go, go, go your way, sell what you have, give to the poor, you will have treasure in heaven. Verse 22, And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. Well, what happened to the joy? He had the joy of discovery. He found the treasure, but when it came up to buying the field, when it came to the price tag of obedience, he was not willing to pay the price. If you want the treasure, you have to be willing to buy the field. Now listen, the price of the field is obedience to discipleship to and intimacy with Jesus. Say that again. The prize of the field is obedience to discipleship to and intimacy with Jesus. I'll say it one more time. The price of the field is obedience to, discipleship to, and intimacy with Jesus. Here is one of the major problems in the body of Christ. Most people want the treasure, but they're not willing to pay the price to buy the field. Most people go to church with the attitude, Preacher, Tell me something that will fix my mess. Tell me something that will fix my problem. Mm -hmm. Show me how to get out of my situation. Show me what will make my world okay. Give me the solution to all of my problems, but don't make one single demand. Mm -hmm. And the kingdom does not work that way. If you want the treasure, you have to be willing to, to buy the field. And the field is obedience to Jesus. It is discipleship to Jesus. It is intimacy with Jesus. That's so very important. That's marriage. Sure it is. It's covenant. It's a covenant. Absolutely, it's covenant. You don't become his bride without these things. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Using that in terms of marriage, Jesus is not easy to be married to. He's not. You can have him for a boyfriend, but you're not going to get the treasure. There is a price. There is a price to walking with Jesus. There is a price to intimacy with Jesus, mm -hmm. and you're not going to get the treasure until you're willing to buy the field. That's just the way it works, and there's mm -hmm. no way around it. There's absolutely no way around it. And it's a sad thing. Most people want the treasure without buying the field. But it's worth the price. It is worth, it's always worth the price. It's worth the price. Yeah. What did the Lord say to you? No one will be able to stand yeah. before me and say it wasn't worth Nobody it. Nobody will be able to stand up before me and say, I'm sorry, Jesus, this price I, prayed, I paid was not worth it. Sorry. Nobody I will be able to do that. I can say after all these years of ministry, in marriage, there have been some very, very, very difficult times in both 
aspects. But it's worth it. Mm -hmm. But it is worth Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Absolutely. It is completely worth it. But that demands a shift in values. Mm -hmm. And you have to shift the values before you can see the final outcome. Mm -hmm. That's called faith. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Any, anything? Okay, let's see. Um... Where are uh, we? I'm going to do my uh, best to finish before nine. So uh, Dan says, "Wow, what a word!" Melissa says, "Kind of like." Uh, I don't I don't know what that word is. Getting the milk. Oh, not getting the milk until you buy the cow. That's absolutely right. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people want freebies. Yeah. Sure, they do. Yeah. They they want they. In life and in Christianity, in in uh, in church, you've got people. All they want is the pleasure of it. They don't want to have to go through anything hard. Well, and a, a lot. Let me say this: um, you can go to church and receive the word. The word is amply available in our generation, and you can have the joy. Of discovery. There's the answer. Mm -hmm. That's what I need to do. But unless you're willing to take that that take that step of obedience, that and this is where we're headed next. In fact, go to Mark chapter four. Go to Mark four. Until you're willing to take that step of obedience, that joy of discovery will dissipate. Mm -hmm. Satan will steal the word. Mm -hmm. So, and most mm -hmm. people think, ooh, that was sure good. Oh, yeah, church is wonderful. Yeah, but is it changing your life? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're going to go jump and shout for a couple of hours and then go back to the same old pfft you're dealing with on a daily basis, what, what does that accomplish? Mm -hmm. And the preacher may be doing his job. He may be laying it out there. There's the treasure hid in the field. Mm -hmm. But what price are you willing to pay? Mm-hmm. So very important. But just so that's chewing. just some really, really. Um, oh, it's serious business. Serious stuff. It's where the body of Christ is. Mm -hmm. And they've been taught the joy of discovery, but they haven't gone to this next section or next stage, which is strength. So let's look at it. Mark chapter four. Let's begin with verse 1. It says, And he began to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea. And the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables, and said unto them in his doctrine or teaching, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. Now, the Lord told me years ago, I mean easily 25 years ago, verses 5 and 6 describe the majority of the body of Christ. Let's look at it again. Verse 5 says, Some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. When the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. Now, Jesus gives us the explanation of this in verse 16. Let's look at it. It says, And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. Hurrah! Same Greek word. They, the joy of discovery. Just like the rich young ruler. Maybe these people are in a desperate situation, but they've got the answer. This is it. They receive it with gladness and have no root in themselves and so endure but for a time. The joy of, the, of discovery will dissipate. And so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. So 
they received it with joy, the joy of discovery, but they have no root. And it says Satan comes immediately, or Satan came, or say it this way, afterward when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake. Well, that came from the devil. The affliction, the Greek word for affliction, affliction literally means the pressure of circumstances. The pressure of circumstances. Affliction and persecution. Persecution is what comes through other people. Y'all were uh, actually addressing that earlier, you know, when the Lord shows you something and you end up uh, casting your pearl before swine <laughs> and they tell you how messed up you are. That's persecution. Mm -hmm. It's coming through other people. And if you allow it, Satan will use that to rob you of the Word. But now here, here's what I want you to see. They received it with joy. They had no root. Persecution and affliction arose for the Word's sake. Satan's attack, listen to me carefully, Satan's attack will always be at the point of obedience. I'm going to say that again. Satan's attack will always be at the point of obedience. His objective is to divide and conquer. But I mean, you can trace this principle all the way back to the Garden of Eden. When, when the serpent showed up in the garden, the topic of conversation was what? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, why was that the topic of conversation? Because that was the tree of the commandment. The command of God centered around that tree. Consequently, it became the focal point of obedience or disobedience. And Satan will come against you at the point of obedience. He will begin to apply pressure. And if you allow it, it will begin to divide your trinity. The way you're going to maintain and go into the next phase of joy or stage of joy where the joy of the Lord becomes your strength and produces root is obedience. That's what will carry you. That's what will uh, transport you into the next phase. Now, just as just as an illustration, this is this is this is a concrete example. Uh, you may be in all kinds of financial problems, and you begin to hear teaching on the tithe and the blessing of the tithe and the tither and what God will do. And you may begin to hear all kinds of testimonies of of people mm -hmm. that were tithers and how what God did and how God did and da 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 da. But I will tell you, it irritates me beyond words to hear testimonies of people that tithe and all they says, well, we just started tithing and our life became wonderful. <laughs> Didn't happen. Not overnight. Not overnight. It most certainly did not. Not immediately. No. But um, you can hear that. There's the answer. You found the treasure. There, That's it right there. Well, the next, what's the next thing? Obedience. Are we willing to commit in this area of the tithe? If you don't, then the joy of that, the, that discovery will soon dissipate. But if you make the concrete decision, we will obey God. And you begin to give and you begin to tithe. What that does, it begins to produce root. Mm-hmm. And I shared Sunday morning, I don't do this all the time, haven't done it very often, but there have been times when we went before God and took the checkbook and said, look at here. <laughs> Listen, we're, we're obedient. Now, this is what you promised the tither. We're obedient. Mm -hmm. Now, we expect the God of all the earth to do what's right. Mm -hmm. We said, well, that's arrogant. No, it's root. Mm -hmm. we've been obedient, it produces root. Mm -hmm. 
And it, it, gives you, it gives you root, it makes you solid with God, and it makes you solid against the enemy. Mm -hmm. It's obedience that takes you into that next stage mm -hmm. of the joy of the Lord is now your strength. strength. It is not arrogant to no. expect the seed to bring forth no. a harvest. You've got to put the sucker in the ground. But you have to put it in the ground. Yeah. You have to be willing to put it in there. Mm -hmm. And keep putting seed in the ground, and keep mm -hmm. putting seed in the ground, and keep putting seed in the ground. And it may not look like it's going to come up quick enough. Yeah. But it now, will. God starts the instant you step into obedience. Absolutely. The and millisecond. God, yeah. And God may do some stuff mm -hmm. just on a miraculous level immediately. Mm -hmm. but, but for most people, uh, when they start to tithe, from the beginning of... I'm going to be God a tither. God said, put me to the test. Yeah. It usually doesn't show up immediately. No. no. Now, for the person who is a tither already and has already been practicing that level of obedience and mm -hmm. commitment, mm -hmm. they do have some instantaneous things. But it's not necessarily based on the last seed they sowed, no, but on the seed they've the been years sowing. years back, yeah. It There's been times we've lifestyle. sown seed that we knew... We knew that it didn't come up until sometimes weeks, months, well, years there have been later. Times, there have been times when, when we've had harvest on things. And God's moved miraculous and God has spoken and said, this was the result of what you did mm -hmm. back then. Back when, yeah. And when God tells you, first of all, it's across the board. <clears throat> As a Christian, as a believer, you are a fool if you do not tithe. Mm -hmm. God has given us a way. A way We're going to get into that next week. He not, has, not about the tithe. He okay. has given us a way to stay in the blessing. And tithe is not your message tonight. But the tithe is the, tithe is the tax of the kingdom. Yeah. But if you don't sow seed, but why it, are you expecting goes, a harvest? It goes back to obedience. Mm -hmm. It goes back to obedience. And the seed you sow is not just money, but I promise you, a good portion of what God requires of you in the natural is going to be connected to the financial realm. Yeah. It's going to be connected to the financial Where your realm. treasure is, there your heart will be also. That's right. Well, another, uh, let me say this to you. The tax of the kingdom is the tithe. And you should make every effort to tithe. But let me say something to you. We've been there when it wasn't there. I mean, we've mm -hmm. been there. But here's the deal. There are different ways to give. Um, if you're in a position, if listen, if given ten percent and you that is the tax of the kingdom, and I'm not trying to give you an out, but what I'm telling you is, if you're absolutely terrified in your financial situation to sow ten percent, the fear negates the the effort anyway. Mm -hmm. My point is. And I've had people come to me and ask me about this. My my answer is is this: Do whatever you have to do to get on the sowing end. Mm -hmm. Start where you are with what you have and get on the sowing end. That is where it starts. But being a tither starts by the decision. Absolutely, it does. And it starts by saying, "Okay, Lord, in my heart." In my intention and in my motivation, I am a tither. Yeah. That's so a good I, point. That's an identification. I don't have yeah. the ten cents for this dollar, but I've got three cents. Yeah. Or I've got five cents. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm a tither because my decision is to tithe. So I'm going to bring you this three cents on this dollar. And I'm asking you to take that three cents 
and give me credit for 10 cents because in my heart, I'm a tither. And as God begins to bless you, go into... Exactly. And then when God gives you another dollar Mm -hmm. and it's only 4 cents the next time, then go before him. I'm coming before you as a tither because in my heart and in my desire and in my decision, I'm a tither. Mm -hmm. Increase me, Lord, so that I can give you the 10 cents on this dollar. Mm -hmm. And you shared Sunday. There were times in our early years of marriage and ministry, Mm -hmm. we lived on so little, y'all would not even believe how little we lived on. Mm -hmm. And we're alive and well here to tell about it. Mm -hmm. But there were times when we went to church, because everywhere we went to church in Oklahoma was a long distance. And it usually took every dime we had just to get enough gas to go to church. Mm -hmm. And we literally would take pennies and nickels and dimes. We would scrape up everything we could come up with. But we went before the Lord and we declared ourselves as tithers. And we would take our little dab of change and drop it down in that bucket Mm -hmm. and believe God for more. God honored it. Um, let's back up just a little bit. A little while ago, Trixie says, Oh my goodness, the milk cow example brought to mind my dad and grandma at HEB. They want the free stuff with the meal deal. At HEB, if you buy this one thing, you get the, whole, the rest of the stuff to make a whole meal. Okay. okay. She says, They want the free stuff with the meal deal, but get mad at the price of the thing you have to buy to get the free stuff. <laughs> <laughs> she said it's the same thing but on a larger scale yeah. that for her is an aha moment yeah. uh, Dan says glory to God tithe versus gift question mark same or different next week <laughs> they, it, it is different but it um, the tithe is the tax of the kingdom um but the key issue is remembering that it's all seed. Mm-hmm. Uh, the tithe is not a debt I owe, it's a seed I sow. Mm-hmm. Um, but the tithe, and a lot of it has to do with the number 10. I don't, I don't want to get over into this, but the, the number 10 is, is the number of ordinal perfection. Um, in other words, you go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then 10 begins another... Um, that's the word I'm looking for. Sequence. Another sequence. And so, ten is the number of ordinal perfection. Ten commandments. Uh, the, the nation of Israel uh, wound up walking in the wilderness for 40 years because they believed the report of the ten spies. Uh, the tithe, the ten, becomes what represents the whole. And that makes it mm-hmm. unique from a gift. But it's what represents the whole. Mm-hmm. Giving that 10% sanctifies the other 90 in your pocket in a way that just a gift will not. But it's all seed. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Um, anyway, mm-hmm. but it, we're going to go, at, it's not going to be on the tide next week, but we're going to approach this from a little different direction. So, any, anything else? No. <laughs> okay. Now, obedience carries you from discovery into strength. Now, let's deal with the last one with authority. It's nearly 9 o'clock, and we'll finish on that one. Let's go to Matthew chapter 25. And while you're going to Matthew 25, yes. It is literal money that is tithe. But there are so many other things that you can give oh, just yeah. so that you can yeah. sow seed. Mm-hmm. Give what you have. And we don't have time to go into it tonight. I could tell you lots of stories about things that we gave. Natural things. Mm-hmm. Time. Your time is worth so much an hour. You, you may think your time is worth 10 or 15 or 40 or $100 an hour. I don't know what you think your time is worth. I know what we think our time is worth. Um, and I guarantee you, 
it's not small. But give your time in your profession, in your ability. Sow your time in your expertise. Mm -hmm. And let's, let's just say you believe your time is worth $15 an hour. And you give that to someone, particularly someone who can do nothing back for you or into a ministry. Then you have sown $15. Now that gets into a little bit of a... Well, and another aspect of this too, we had a situation where we had a car stolen from us. Mm -hmm. And we prayed and said, all right, God, this thing's been stolen the odds of getting it back are not very high. So here's what we're going to do. God, rather than allowing the devil to steal from us, we are going to take what the devil tried to steal and give it mm -hmm. and sow it as a seed. Mm -hmm. And so even if they find the car, find the guy that ripped it off and bring him in and say, we got your car and we got the guy, we will we will say no. We gave we gave him. that to him. We gave mm -hmm. that to him. We chose to do that. God is our witness. That was in the spring of 1982. By the end of that year, we had two new cars. They weren't brand new, but they were new mm -hmm. to us. Had two cars paid for cash. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that guy, if we had turned him in, he had just gotten out of prison. He had been in prison 25 years. And if we had turned him in, of course, he certainly yeah. would have gone immediately back yeah. to prison for a very long time. Yeah. But we determined if they he brought it to us, it. we would say. Mm -hmm. And we not only sowed it for our own vehicles, our number one seed was that God would get a hold of his heart and mm -hmm. change his heart and his mind and that God would not let him alone, that the Holy Spirit would not let him alone, mm -hmm. but deal with his heart. Yeah. So we were sewing for Melvin, and we were sewing for us yep. in, in giving that car. Um, Dan says, blessed by that ex explanation, clarifying. Trixie says, I've given lots of banana bread over the years. Exactly. There seed. are so many ways to sow seed. You must, 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 must be in constant what-can-I-give mode. Yeah. Okay. See. All right. Matthew chapter 25, we've gone from discovery to strength. Let's deal with the authority. Verse 14, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Now notice verse 14 he said, The kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. He did not just give them the talents. He gave them all he had. Everything was under their authority. But the thing that's, a, that's specific about the talents, and it's apparent this is true from, from the way that he dealt with the servants, this money was given specifically for the purpose of investment. It's all right. It's specifically for investment. All right. It says, Unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to several ability, and straightway took his journey. Now, and likewise he that... Or verse 16... Then he that received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliveredst unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained besides them five talents more. Now, Notice here in verse 19, it says, After a long time the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. In other words, the Lord has come back. He's going to deal with the servants. As we would say, it's harvest time. It's, it's, it's reward time for whatever you've done with what the Lord has, 
has given to you. Um, I shared this scripture last week with you. Isaiah 66, 5 says, Hear the word of the Lord, you that tremble at his word, your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, Let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy. He shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. So, you know, I can picture in my own mind, in my own mind, those those two servants, the one with the five and the one with the two. They've they've done what they were told to do with the Lord's money. The, the Lord, it's been multiplied back. I can just hear them being excited. Man, I'm so excited when the Lord comes back. I'm going to show him what I've done. Man, this is wonderful. I've gained five more. You've gained two more. Oh, this is going to be great. So now it's harvest time. It's <coughs> manifestation time. So verse 20, And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, you delivered unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained five beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, you good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of your Lord. He also had received two talents, came and said, Lord, you delivered unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents besides them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Now notice what he said to both of these guys. I'll make you ruler. We're dealing with authority here. I'll make you ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Now, if I had time, we would go into it, but I, I'll, I'll just touch on it here. Um, in the Old Testament, you know that they anointed the kings of Israel with oil, the anointing oil. That anointing oil was and is the joy of the Lord. It's the oil of joy. When Jesus sat down at the right hand of majesty on high, he was anointed with the oil of gladness above his fellows. The anointing of kings is the anointing of joy. So now here, the Lord has come back. These guys have been obedient. And now, it's the time of manifestation. And they're made ruler over much. They enter into the joy of their Lord. They were put to the test, the test of obedience. And now that they've been obedient, the test has become a testimony. They've obeyed God, and they have stepped over into that place where they know what God will do, not just because of what He says in His Word, but because it's manifestation time. And they have a testimony of what the Lord has done. And let's go back to the tithe here. You know, like you said, when we started out, it was pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters. And no, it wasn't sudden manifestations. But through the years, mm -hmm. as the manifestations have come, mm -hmm. we have an authority in that area. We have an authority of joy. It's gone beyond root to a mm -hmm. point of, we can show you on paper this is what the Lord has done and this mm -hmm. works. We carry authority as kings mm -hmm. in that area. We're rulers mm -hmm. in that area. We know what God's Word will mm -hmm. do and we have the, the testimony to prove it. Mm -hmm. That obedience will not only give you the root, but it will also carry you into that place of testimony where you can say, this is what God did for me. Mm -hmm. That is the third area of the joy of the Lord. It's Amen. an area of rulership. It's an area of authority. Now, let's deal with this one one guy, last guy with the, the one talent. We'll be done. Verse 22, or verse 24 rather. Then he that received the one talent came and said, Lord, I know that you are a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not strawed. Hey, you can't do that. You can't reap where you haven't sown. You can't do that. 
what he's saying to this to his lord he is lord <laughs> here's your here's your talent <laughs> I, you know i didn't do anything with it but you know i mean lord i knew you'd be successful no matter what i did verse 25 here's a key and i was afraid now that goes back to what you're teaching on Thursday. What is what's the one thing that keeps people out of obedience? Fear. Fear. If I obey God, <laughs> what's going to happen to me? God is <laughs> going to strip me of everything yeah. I've ever wanted. Well, that, He's going to keep me from was, having anything yeah. I want. I'm not ever going to be happy. I'm going to live like a monk. I'm going to be like a, a, you know, I'm going to live in yeah. poverty and I'm going to live without fulfillment in my life and I'm not going to have anything and my life is going to be the most dull and boring life if I obey God. The, uh, the, uh, we watched a documentary the other night of Cor Corey Ten Boom and she made a statement in this documentary that just was so profound mm -hmm. that it's, she was in love with this guy, oh, just madly in love. And um, then he showed up at her house with his fiance. So she was just devastated. And her dad started talking to her about, you know, it's love is a powerful thing, and and when you're you're robbed in that area, it hurts. But love has to be redirected. Mm -hmm. And she made a statement. She said. I made the decision right then to surrender my if onlys. Mm -hmm. Man, you don't know how profound that is unless you've been there. Mm -hmm. I chose to surrender my if onlys. Well, if only. If only. Mm -hmm. If only. Mm -hmm. And that, that's what you're saying. Mm -hmm. But fear will keep you out of obedience. Mm -hmm. Because you see obedience the person in fear mm -hmm. sees obedience as being taken from. Yeah, like the rich young ruler. Mm -hmm. As being robbed. Yeah. As being um, mistreated. Well, and, and like we just read, for he found the treasure and for joy sold all that he had and bought the field. The Lord loves a Cheerful. cheerful and it's the same root mm -hmm. Kara mm -hmm. loves a cheerful giver and mm -hmm. so this man he said I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the earth lo there hast thou thou hast that is thine his lord answered and said unto him you wicked and slothful servant listen to what he said you knew that I reap where I sowed not and gathered where I had not straw. Thou, thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury Take the un take the therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which has no talents has ten talents, for unto every one that has shall be given and he shall have abundance. But from him, but from him that has not shall be taken even away that which he hath. Cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Um, what the Lord said to him was, if you knew I'd be successful no matter what, then you should have done something with what I gave you. Now that, in essence, is what he, what he said to him. But I was praying about this. It's been many, many years ago, and I was praying about this, and I said, Lord, uh, what if uh, the guy with the one talent, what if he had taken and invested it and just lost it all, or the, or the five or the two? What if they lost everything? <laughs> I said, <coughs> what would you have done? And the Lord spoke to me and he said, I would have rewarded him. <laughs> yeah. What? What do you mean you would have rewarded him? He said, go back and read it again. So I read it again. And when the Lord, the Lord said to them, he said, you have been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over much. He said, Kenneth, I didn't reward their increase. I rewarded their faithfulness. Oh. Mm -hmm. There's hope for us after all. There's hope all. for us. But, here, and, <laughs> but yeah, here's, and here's the deal. It, it, he gave to each one according to his several ability. Listen, we're not all called to have a ministry as big as Billy Graham's. 
Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, that may blow a hole in your theological balloon, but get over yourself. Mm -hmm. We're not all called to have that, and that's not sour grapes or anything of the kind. Mm -mm. It's just a simple fact. There are different levels according to their several ability. There are different levels of calling. But we can all mm -hmm. reap the same reward as Billy Graham if we're faithful in that which God mm -hmm. has called us to do. The key issue mm -hmm. is not the size of the ministry or the increase. It's the faithfulness. Mm -hmm. That's what the Lord is looking for. Mm -hmm. That's what the Lord is looking for. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 That's good stuff. The wheels are turning, looks like. The wheels are turning. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, Trixie says, whoa. And Miss Diane is with us. Hey, Diane. I am glad you're with us, dear. I've enjoyed that CD. That's good. I have, too. I think for the next time we have a conference, I think she needs I to sing. I think Diane needs to she sing. She needs to come sing. She has a beautiful I, voice. Yes, she does. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I've been playing it in my office, and oh, it's Kenneth good. can hear in his office. So. Yeah, it's good. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. Enjoy it. I sing along with you, Diane. She does. Good yeah. harmonies. And, and just FYI, if you would like to have a CD of Miss Diane Wooten, I'm sure you could probably uh, send her ten or fifteen or twenty dollars, and she would be glad to put yeah. one in the mail it's to you. It's good too. It's good. It's good. Yeah. Good, I don't good, know what good. you charge for them, but um, y'all talk to Diane about that. Yeah, and it's good. You'll enjoy it. Yay! Get it from be part of the family. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Amen. All right. Yeah. Well, oh, I'm, I have a testimony okay. about my CD. Oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah share that. You shared it on the Facebook page, but yeah. a lot of them not on the yeah. deal, so share it. Um, I have a CD that we actually just kind of put together after we uh, quit having our television program, mm -hmm. which was a long time ago, 10 years ago. Yeah, 2005. Wow. 2005. Ooh, nine, nine years ago. Wow. Um, anyway, uh, we pulled the audio off of the programs and put together a CD. And because, you know, people ask for my music a lot and we never have gone to a studio or anything. So that CD is not professionally mixed or anything. It's just... But it's good. You know. It really is good. And, and the anointing is on it. Well, and it's it's pretty good mix when you consider... Yeah, it, considering it's, it's really all, it's good. actually decent. It's very good. And uh, the best I can figure is I have given a couple of my CV CDs to people here in town and one lady in particular who works at the country store here. Well, this couple here in Menard, the Niffins, Mr. Niffin was your history teacher mm -hmm. in Andrews, mm -hmm. and they've lived here all the time that we've lived here. And uh, I saw them inside out Sunday, and Mr. Niffin said, we've been listening to your tape. And I said, my tape? <laughs> and he said, well, a CD. And I said, where did you get a CD of me? He said, I don't know. My wife got it. He said, we've got it in the car and we've been listening to it. And he said, I want you to know you're the best singer in the country. You're the greatest singer in the country. And I said, well, thank you, Mr. Niffin. Well, um, you don't know mm -hmm. where your stuff is going and the effect no it's going to have. And that so blessed me because yeah, I thought, no you know, they're partaking of the anointing that they don't, wouldn't identify it as the anointing. Mm -hmm. He just thinks I'm a good singer. <laughs> and um, that just really blessed me when mm -hmm. that happened. Mm -hmm. So uh, music has a way of... Yeah, he asked you who that gray-haired man was sitting at He the did. He, he said, who's that gray-haired old man sitting over there with you? <laughs> yeah, yes. But I'll have you know I got out of his class with a 98.9 average in history. So there. <laughs> so there, yeah. So there. Uh, let's see... Um, Diane says seven. Well, it's at least worth ten, especially if you got to mail it. Yeah. Um, uh, Danish asked the best and fastest two hours of my week. Awesome. Um, Trixie God, says me man. too. Danish Shasta, I love it. Diane, God is good. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. This has been very good. That is the most excellent Thank you. word that you Thank have you. delivered. And we have, you know, you can go back on the archives and study it out some more. 
we have the CD from Sunday, which it went a little different direction, kind of. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. anyway, I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. I I enjoy this this kind of teaching. I enjoy doing a lot. I did just I enjoy it. It was good. Praise God. Very good. Praise Very God. Very good. Amen. We got anything else? I don't think so. I think that's it. Trixie, love y'all. This has hasn't I think she means has been very good. Hasn't been very good. <laughs> oh she no, she meant that. This hasn't been very good. It was awesome. <laughs> 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 great. Thank you, Trixie. Yes, thank you. Uh, yes, it has been an excellent <laughs> teaching. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes, even my mother today, when she came over, we were visiting about churches and preachers, and and uh, mother goes to several different places to help with music and singing and playing, and so she's in a lot of different churches and mm -hmm. Bible studies and things. So she hears a lot of different preachers and the level of preaching and. She said, one word she used, she said, preachers are soft. She said, they preach a soft message. And she said, one of them she goes to, she said, it's just soothing. He just wants to soothe everybody. Mm -hmm. but she, and she was sitting next to Kenneth. She said, this, this is where I get fed. This is where I get real teaching. Praise God. So, That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. I basically teach the way I want to be taught. And Amen. I, and I teach the way the Lord teaches me. So the Lord, the Lord is good. Uh, Jackie says, "Good message. Love you. Thank you, dear. Uh, we love you too." And uh, Diane says, "The November freebie. It is the. It is five messages. It is the revelation of God's goodness. And so that will be for November and December. I've gone to a bi-monthly, give more <coughs> people a chance to um, download it." And also, I realized changing series every month that people are kind of getting logged on it. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, if I give everybody two months to listen to it, and you know, at their leisure, leisure, mm -hmm. however you say it. And um, so I've changed it around a little bit. But so this is for uh, November, December. Okay. So. We love you all. Yes, we love you guys. It's great to have you with us. It's especially great to have our kids get with us. Get on the Facebook page. Go to the <laughs> website. Get on the Facebook <clears throat> page. Y'all wrap up and bundle up. Yes. Build a big fire. Far. Build a big, big far. Far. And um, stay warm. And we love y'all. Yes. Father, in the name yes. of Jesus, we just come before you. We bless everyone. Yes, Lord either watching yes. live or by archive. We bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus mm -hmm. Christ of Nazareth. Yes, and we declare the joy of the Lord is your yes. strength. Yes, amen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' amen. name, amen. God bless you guys. Bless y'all. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.